Y'all shoot music videos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah shoot mine? What, you, what are you doing? You rap? Yeah. That's amazing. Y'all shooting right now? Shooting a video right now? Uh, yeah. He is, okay. yeah. Oh, Y'all want to see? You're spitting bars for us. That'd be amazing. Stand If you stand right here on the corner, actually, I'll get you with these homes right behind you. The light's really good right there. So, y'all, like, y'all stand right there. Oh, that looks so good. Hang on. We're going to get one more with this car passing. Fantastic. That looks great. So, like, let me show you what I got so far. <laughs> so you never you never know what you're gonna get when you set out taking night photos in the city. Sometimes it's just long exposures of cars going by a chunky cross and other times it's a rap video and Sometimes you get both in one night. I'm Mike Kristen. I'm a photographer based out of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, my passion is the night. I like taking long exposure photos. My, my approach to night photography is standing pretty solitary for a long period of time. Uh, I got started with night photography probably 18 or 19 years ago at this point. I was working night shifts and I needed something to do on the nights that I wasn't working that wasn't sitting in the house. So uh, I picked up a camera and got out and tried taking photos at night and found that uh, it's really hard to do. So then you buy a tripod and then you buy a shutter release and the next thing you know, you're standing in the middle of an alleyway with the shutter open for five minutes uh, because it's just such a part of what I enjoy doing. I mean, I'm, I'm an insomniac at heart and probably always will be, but uh, honestly, the thing that keeps me coming back to night photography today is just how uh, out of control it is. Just you get out there and you set up your camera and you start taking photos and you lose complete control over the scene. Uh, it's, it's things coming in and out of frame, it's lights moving through, it's street lights turning on and off or planes flying overhead. It's a total lack of control. And I love it, I've become kind of addicted to it. Uh, it's very different from daytime photography where you're capturing things in, in fractions of a second. Now you're making a scene work over 20, 30, 40 seconds and anything can happen. So I think of night photography as telling a story in long form. And any story is gonna be comprised of three basic elements. You're gonna have your plot, you're gonna have your setting, and then you're gonna have your primary characters, whether they're antagonists or protagonists. And I like to just remove one of those out of the equation. And so maybe you have a setting and maybe you have a character. And in setting up the camera and letting the shutter roll, a plot develops. Uh, cars drive through and add drama, or lights cut out and it becomes dark and suddenly it becomes more moody. Or maybe you remove a character and now all you have is a plot and a setting. And the end product is essentially this photograph that the viewer has to infer a lot. And I try very hard not to give them anything to work with, just two out of the three elements of, of uh, the story. And so sometimes it could just be somebody standing in the fog with like a car passing and it's up to the, it's up to the viewer to decide what it means. I'm doing all of my night photography with a Canon 6D. I mean, that camera came out in like 2012. So it's, it's, a, it's a 12 year old camera and I'm processing all of my stuff on a 2015 iMac on like uh, four or five year old software at this point. And, and for me, all of those things are maybe limitations, but I don't view them as such because uh, I've been working with them for so long that they're just an extension of my process, right? I could upgrade, but I don't see any point to right now. I think gear obsession is easy with photography because the, the gear is central to the craft, right? Like without it, you're not taking any photos. But I think when you, when you become obsessed with the equipment, you quickly lose focus of what the craft really is, which is seeing and observing and taking part in. And you can do that with, with any camera. It doesn't matter if it's an iPhone or you know a disposable camera or film or digital, none of that is, is important. What's important is that you're present in the scene I think with photography today, it's, it's moving towards a much better place than maybe it was 20 years ago. More and more photographers are connecting on social media platforms. And social media is not the best place to share photos, but it is a place that photographers are successfully sharing work. 
and making connections. Um, and, and we're seeing so much more of each other's vision now than we ever have in, in any time in photography. Uh, it is far more democratic now and more available and accessible than it's really ever been. Uh, people can self-publish their own books in batches of 30 and hand them out to their friends and get them excited about the craft. And all of that's really nucleating around people's use of social media. So I'm excited about platforms like Glass, which are, which are bringing photographers together from multiple different disciplines uh, and sharing the work with a, without a lot of the things that make social media conventionally toxic. There's no metrics chasing, there's no influencer clout chasing. It's really just people that are passionate about the craft creating work and putting it out there and people can can kind of congregate around what they like and build community around that is it provides a platform for people to build community around their love of a genre or a subject or you know whatever form of photography it is they like i think if tomorrow social media just poofed off of the internet and and it became that much harder to share work I'd still be out here at night. I'd, I'd still be out with the tripod taking photos. Uh, they'd just be for me. I've taken inspiration from a lot of other photographers and learning how to take photos is a lot like learning how to write a sentence. You, you have to build your vernacular and you can do that by reading a lot of books or you can do that by practicing writing or you know whatever. And it's the same with photography. The more you look at art, whether it's somebody's work on Instagram that you find interesting or somebody's work on glass that's just like speaking to you, uh, you take from that elements and you subconsciously digest them and as you go out and you start to create images, they come to the surface. Uh, I think that so much of our vision is informed by what is happening at a level that we don't understand and, and we just kind of intuitively catch ideas in the moment and uh, we see things that like, don't necessarily make a lot of sense, but we know we have to photograph it. And then when we see it produced, whether we print it or we look at it on the computer, it makes sense. Um, and you learn that by looking at work. You learn that by ravenously devouring people's work. I think the thrill of being in Baltimore for me is there's so much amazing, rich love everywhere you go in this city. Whether it's the most rundown, disenfranchised neighborhood in the city, there are people that are there that are making it their own and pouring their love into it, and that's infectious. Uh, I, I, it is probably the thing that I've, I've come to do the most as I've photographed here is just spend more time talking to the people that, that call these neighborhoods home, whether it's uh, my own neighborhood here in Reservoir Hill, or if it's you know down on the waterfront in Canton, or if it's all the way up in like, Lauraville Hamilton, uh, the more that you spend time talking to the people, the more you start to appreciate the spirit of this place. I mean, there's no other city like Baltimore. I hate to ask you this, would you be willing to be like a model in a, sh in a shoot I'm doing right here real quick? Like right here in front of this building where the light's coming down. And, and you guys look great. I mean, first of all, the outfits are great, but you have like sequins on your shirt and it's catching the light really nicely. Uh -huh. All I would need you to do is stand like right here on the other side where that purple light's coming down. Would you, mostly okay, portraiture? I you oh. oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. One, two, three. Uh, and I'll, let me, I'll show you what I did here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was definitely, thank you so Thank much. you both so much. Take care. Yeah, you too. You never know if you uh, don't ask. Baltimore wants you to confront it on genuine, authentic terms. It doesn't want you to come at it with any preconceived notions. It doesn't want you to take any, anything you've heard in the media and, and come at this city with ideas of it being dangerous or, or a rough city, which certainly that exists. People just want you to come at it with a genuine curiosity, a willingness to take in the experiences of being here and, uh, and just, a willingness to love it for what it is, right? And it'll reciprocate that love. I am wearing nothing but dark clothing, uh, this is true. Don't, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Wear something high fizz, don't get run over. <laughs>
You can get away with so much wearing a construction jacket. Everyone will just assume your tripod is some construction equipment. So don't be afraid. Get out there. Have fun with it. <laughs>